it's uh, such a good point that you that you made. Fifty thousand dollars may not sound like a lot, but it is a stepping stone and it is a starting point for um, much bigger and um, much bigger opportunities. From research to real life, a podcast by the Clinical and Translational Science Collaborative of Northern Ohio. Hello, and welcome to episode three from Research to Real Life. I'm your host, Sue Morosco, Assistant Director of Research Programs and Proposal Development at the CTSC of Northern Ohio. Today, we are thrilled to have a very special guest, Umit Gherkin. He is the CTSC Pilot Module Lead. Umit, thank you so much for being here. It's nice to be here, thank you, Sue. So we're here today to talk about some of the funding opportunities and the resources available at the CTSC, as well as the new RFA that has just been released, the annual pilot. For people listening, it is important to note that we have several funding opportunities through the CTSC, and here they are. The annual pilots are up to one year for $50,000, but the projects must be completed within that 12-month cycle. We have um, up to eight grants available in that $50,000 range. We also have core pilots, which are meant to be used within six months, and those are up to $10,000 a piece. Those are approved on a rolling basis and are designed to support the use of core facilities and services at CASE and our affiliated institutions. We have theme pilots that um, are around a year to use that range from $20,000 to $50,000 around specific themes um, every year. And then we have vouchers um, that can be used within a three month period that are $7,500 a piece. Those are proof of concept dollars meant to use be used for necessary costs for a project. All of these are in service, we hope, of larger NIH grants, which I am happy to support you with. So Umit, let's discuss this year's pilot RFA, and how the $50,000 is just one of the things that you get when you engage with funding from the CTSC. Thank you, Sue. Uh, it's it's uh, such a good point that you, that you made. $50,000 may not sound like a lot, but it is a stepping stone and it is a starting point for um, much bigger and um, much bigger opportunities. I would like you to, I would like the potential interested applicants and I would like people who are interested in applying for CTSC to know that the pilot awards are just um, a small piece of the puzzle in the translation research uh, process. Translation research, in my opinion, is about team building and identifying potential roadblocks in uh, bringing your ideas or your inventions or discoveries from uh, from the lab to the to the world uh, if you can identify a certain roadblock in the translation process and be creative about building a team around it and then tell the story in a brief application that you submit to ctsc ctsc will be happy to fund you with a fifty thousand dollar direct cost uh, project budget, but in addition to that, you will have access to many resources that the CTSC offers. And uh, by using the funding, by creating a team, and by using the resources provided by CTSC, the hope and the goal is that your project, your team, will be able to be, we, will be much more competitive uh, for bigger funding opportunities, maybe licensing opportunities down the line, NIH grants, large NIH grants, maybe starting companies based on the inventions and the intellectual property that you will generate along the way. And this is a quick summary of the hope and the expectation of uh, the CTSI annual pilots. Fantastic. So that's lovely for you to mention how this really is a stepping stone and it's a way of building teams and um, giving you an opportunity to really understand um, the potentials of your project. 
So we have annual pilots, and we are hoping for eight annual pilots for up to $50,000 of funding this year. Would you like to tell us some of the details of this new funding cycle? Yes. Uh, starting this year, we would like to have webinars uh, that will be broadcasted as well as recorded, uh, during which we will explain the RFA or the request for applications in detail. So this will include uh, the letter of intent deadline for this year. It is November 15, 2024. And uh, the expectations in terms of uh, how to put together the proposal, how to, how to put together the budget, uh, a formal definition of translational uh, research versus translational science, and the stages of translation that we would like to see, or uh, translation effort efforts that we would like to see in the applications. And uh, this year, uh, something new that we would like to implement is consultation sessions for the investigators or the teams. So we will be available uh, for project-specific questions after the webinar and the goal is to help the teams put together the most uh, comprehensive and the most successful uh, proposal that they can. It will satisfy the expectations and the requirements, and also it would highlight their strengths and uh, the novel and innovative aspects of their project. So the consultation sessions can be scheduled through a Spark request. Uh, more information is available on the CTSC uh, request for applications webpage. Uh, in addition to that, this year we would like to uh, have the investigators think about intellectual property. Uh, they may already know that they have intellectual property associated with their projects, which is great, and they can talk about that. Or if they are not sure if they, if their project has uh, protectable intellectual pro property, um, they can state that also in their applications, and they can request help from the CTSC to uh, evaluate if their um, project has a potential intellectual property. This, the, the reason why this is important is uh, if, there, if there is an intellectual property that can be filed to a technology transfer office at their institution, it might lead to patent applications, provisional patent applications, and patent applications, and that's what uh, companies and the startup companies need uh, for the translational process to happen. So we would like to help with those uh, aspects of the translation projects as well. And one more really important detail uh, that I would like to mention, since the CTSC funding comes from the National Institutes of Health, NIH, they require that all the IRBs are in place before a project starts. So uh, we have clear uh, recommendations and uh, re requirements for having the IRB processes underway or already approved uh, before a project starts. And more information will be available uh, at the webinar. Please watch the recording of the webinar after it is posted. And you come to this with a lot of experience and I'm really interested in hearing you talk about your specific interest in microtechnologies and how that's led to some really interesting work on blood. So uh, I would like to mention that uh, a CTSC annual pilot award was one of the first awards that I received when I started here at CASE as an assistant professor, as an early stage investigator. I knew that I was interested in translation research, and um, I became aware of the pilot program. And I would look, I would like to also emphasize that uh, pilot program review um, review committee is interested in seeing applications from early stage in investigators, and uh, they have a slight advantage compared to more senior investigators in the review process. So at that time, my research was focused on. Um, understanding things at micro scale in small scales, especially inside human body and particularly in human circulation. By any chance, have you read the book Fantastic Voyage by Isaac Asimov? 
I have not read the book, Fantastic <laughs> so, Voyage. So in Fantastic Voyage, uh, a group of four men and one woman, I think, a group of scientists, they are shrunk into a size of a tiny, you know, microbe, and they get inside a, uh, something like a spaceship, but designed for uh, operating in small scales. And with this small ship, they navigate in a human's circulation. And the goal is to go and find a tiny microclot that formed in this person's brain and go and break it down so that this person can live. So I don't want to give many other spoilers about the book in case you are interested in reading it. <laughs> but the idea here is, um, or the curiosity that we have is, can we see and visualize and measure and interact with very small events that are happening? This is small interactions that are happening inside human body at cellular scale. Um, for example, how does a tiny red blood cell passes through a small capillary in the uh, most critical parts of the body, for example, in brain circulation or in, in the kidneys or in the lungs? How does a single red blood cell pick up oxygen as it passes through the uh, capillaries in the lungs? So these are the type of things that we are curious uh, about. And um, our research, uh, since I started here at Case, is focused on that, trying to understand, trying to visualize, uh, trying to measure these small phenomena in uh, scales much smaller than a single human hair. So think about a single human hair and try to slice it maybe t into 10 small pieces in its, you know, along its length. That's the smallest scale that I'm really talking about here. So at that time, I I was interested from a scientific point of view. I was interested in those, at those scales, phenomena that happens at those scales. But of course, um, we have to link it to to humans and the diseases and the patients eventually and ultimately. One of the first projects that I focused on here was developing a basic understanding of uh, red blood cells and hemoglobin. That's the red protein that gives the blood its reddish color and how does hemoglobin and how does red blood cell uh, work inside the body and in the case of a disease for example in the case of a sickle cell disease which is an abnormal hemoglobin leading to abnormal red blood cells and abnormal circulation uh, we were interested in understanding how those abnormal interactions happen um, the good thing about blood disorders is you don't have to really put a spaceship inside a human circulation or you don't have to put a camera inside a circulation uh, or blood vessels. You can just uh, take a small volume of blood uh, and measure many things on, on that blood sample in the lab. About 10 years ago, we didn't really have the tools that we have right now in terms of measuring those small phenomena in, uh, in, um, in blood. So we had to develop the micro technologies and micro scale tools to be able to probe, measure, image, analyze um, the, the normal and abnormal properties of those cells in small scales. The first pilot award that I applied for was uh, technology that we developed in our lab, uh, we call microchip electrophoresis. So it's a micro scale electrophoresis method, which is a way of separating uh, proteins and in this particular case, hemoglobins. And we can actually separate them using these micro technologies based on their charge. So if, for example, a certain hemoglobin has a different charge, we can separate it based on, based on that. And we we have shown that we can actually separate uh, an abnormal hemoglobin from a normal hemoglobin using this technology. Um, and this could be used as a way of screening for or diagnosing uh, the, the abnormality of hemoglobins in, in, in this disease. So that was the idea. And the translational aspect of this project was testing if this idea would work with human patients. So our application to CTSC was 
uh, designing a small clinical study uh, to recruit patients who have uh, abnormal hemoglobins at, at the UH and uh, consent them to our study, receive blood samples and bring those blood samples to our lab and test if we can uh, use our technology to screen for and diagnose these abnormalities. So in basic terms, our curiosity in microscale and uh, some ideas that we uh, developed over the years based on that curiosity uh, lend itself to translational research once we engaged with uh, university, uh, university hospitals, physicians, patients, uh, caregivers, include them in our study so that they can consent them, so that uh, consent the patients so that they can participate in our studies, receive blood samples from them, and test them in the lab. So this was our pilot award. So you took the idea from an Isaac Asmanoff novel. Yes and developed a process to test for sickle cell. And that became the gazelle technology. Yes. And the gazelle technology is now used in how much of the world? So the gazelle technology, which is essentially the um, commercial name of our microchip electrophoresis technology, is now available in more than 35 countries, available at more than 2,000 sites, and it has already been used for more than 1.5 million times to screen for uh, abnormal hemoglobins and particularly sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia, among others, especially in newborns, babies, and children. Uh, especially in India, this technology is now used as part of their national screening program. Uh, to um, screen all the babies, all the um, children for sickle cell disease and hopefully eliminate the disease by 2047. So we are part of those uh, large-scale screening efforts and elimination efforts. That's such an amazing story because it takes it from ideation to experimentation, to translation, so that now your microtechnologies are actually set to change the course of the sickle cell in the, in the world. I am Dr. Anita Mr. Hebert. I'm a practicing general internal medicine physician at Cleveland Clinic and also an implementation science researcher. I am director of our healthcare delivery and implementation science center at Cleveland Clinic, and also serve as the Cleveland Clinic site lead for our clinical and translational science collaborative of Northern Ohio, or the CTSC. Another role that I have with the CTSC is to be our dissemination implementation research champion. So I'm here to invite you to our inaugural Dissemination Implementation Virtual Symposium, which will be delivered on Friday, October 18th from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. It's going to be a very exciting morning where we will have really interesting conversations about the relevance of implementation research to the work that goes on throughout the CTSC. We will talk about the entire translational science spectrum, starting from basic science all the way through to implementation of the research that is created to health systems as well as to our local communities. The goal is for our research to benefit our patients and community members as much as possible. And studying how we do this is really what defines in many ways the field of implementation science research. We have wonderful external speakers who will be helping to stimulate our discussions. And we also have panel discussions with local leaders within the CTSC and our local health systems. We are really excited to be talking about topics such as the alignment of implementation research with operational work. And so for that panel, we will have operational leaders thinking about how they may collaborate with implementation researchers within the CTSC. In addition, we've got a panel discussion planned on implementing for health equity. So what do we need to measure to make sure that we are implementing our research findings in an equitable manner to our populations who can benefit most from our research? 
So once again, I am really hoping that you'll be able to join us for our virtual symposium. Again, it will be Friday, October 18th from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. And I will look forward to seeing you there. We'll have lots of opportunity for audience participation with questions. And so come prepared to have a very exciting discussion that morning. Thank you so much. So after your 2014 annual pilot, which you've described to us so well, um, tell us what the 2019 pilot did for you and what you did with it. Our second CTSC annual pilot focused on the red blood cells. So our first annual pilot was on the hemoglobin, the protein that carries oxygen, that is the most abundant protein in the bloodstream and in the red, in red blood cells. Um, a different research program in our lab was focusing on um, measuring the abnormal properties of red blood cells in certain diseases. So their stickiness, for example, red blood cells are designed not to be sticky. Uh, we developed a new microfluidic test for their measuring their stickiness. The second pilot project focused on evaluating if we can use this measure of red blood cell stickiness as a um, biomarker in sickle cell disease. For example, if a patient has a large number of sticky red blood cells, what does this mean or does it mean anything in relation to the clinical state or treatment response? So this second pilot focused on, uh, uh, again, gathering a team around this project to evaluate if we can measure this new biomarker in a group of patients and see if it has uh, a useful uh, information associated with it in relation to the clinical state of the patient. For example, if the patient is doing well, we would expect to see less stick red blood cells. If the patient is not doing well, the, the, the number of sticky red blood cells might go up. With treatments, the numbers should go down. So this is what we wanted to evaluate in simple terms with the second CTSC pilot. And this pilot led to many other funding opportunities or awards later on. And we started a company here in Cleveland, Biochip Labs is the name of the company, that now can provide this new biomarker uh, to clinical trials, clinical studies, and uh, many pharmaceutical companies have em employed this new test and other tests uh, that this company has um, developed over the years in um, cell and gene therapy trials. For example, in sickle cell disease, one of the emerging treatment options is a curative therapy based on using gene therapy to correct the mutation associated with the disease. So this company now offers these microfluidic tests to measure if the functional properties of the red blood cells improve after such a therapy. Uh, so again, the CTSC pilot award was the starting point for much bigger and uh, more substantial awards that led to commercialization eventually. That's amazing. Which also brings up translational science translational research and how that process works. Would you tell us a little bit about translational science and translational research? Yes, I would be happy to. Um, starting this year, uh, CTSC annual pilot program will support translation research projects as well as translational science projects. The difference between translation research and translational science is Translation research typically focuses on a particular uh, translational challenge for a particular project that is focused on a particular technology or a disease. So if you have a very specific idea or a, or a technology to diagnose or prevent or treat a certain disease, and if you have, let's say, come a certain way uh, along the discovery, invention, prototyping, and maybe the next bottleneck or the next challenge for you is to engage with a community partner or a certain physician group or a caregiver group, or maybe a patient group to test if your prototype or the idea or the uh, invention works. Identifying that challenge and 
gathering support or putting a team around that challenge to solve that challenge is the translation research uh, is defined as a tra as translational research translational science on the other hand is typically uh, project ag agnostic or maybe i should say technology agnostic disease agnostic it is uh, essentially developing a framework of addressing translation research challenges. So, for example, translation science can be a particular way of testing a certain idea in a certain clinical setting. Science aspect would be to figure out what would be the best strategy to uh, tackle that challenge, to tackle the translation research challenge. It might be a way of engaging with a particular patient group. It might be a way of uh, it might be research on the way of engaging with a certain community partner. It might be a research project on how to collect a particular set of data from a particular set of group. Uh, that's kind of the distinction between the translation between translation research and translation science projects. Fantastic. And finally, as you see the future of translational science and translational research. Uh, what is your goal as the new pilot lead to see this, this vision grow mm -hmm. in CASE and the CTSC? Yes, uh, that's a good question. I can say that since I started my research program here at CASE, I think um, I was lucky to be successful in all different sorts of translation research programs. So I think we were able to receive support and funding from all different sorts of translation research mechanisms that you can think of. Um, internal resources such as the CTSC, uh, state resources, federal resources from the NIH, and we also received support through SPIR, SDTR programs after we started a company based on the inventions and the technologies that we have developed. What I have realized over the years is translation research support, translation research funding is much different than basic research funding. Uh, for example, a typical NIH R01 or a typical NSF uh, project. Translation research support is much more than just the funding that you receive. For example, in the case of CTS annual pilots, it is $50,000 in direct costs. It's much more than that. It is the, the mentorship and advice and the network and the fellowship of other investigators that were previously funded by this program or CTSC resources and CTSC staff um, that can help you, guide you, and support you uh, throughout your translational journey. So in my experience, uh, the support that I received from translation research programs was much more than funding. Funding was just a small piece of the puzzle. You cannot really get anything done if you don't have the funding. But more importantly, if that funding is... Uh, so-called smart funding, if it comes with some additional knowledge and exper experience, expertise, and um, advice, mentorship, that's much more valuable. I think that's what we will try to do uh, with the CTSC Pilot Awards. We would like investigators to feel supported. We would like them, we would like them to know that if they need help or advice or mentorship or a new team member or a connection to some other institution or uh, to other CTSC programs or a particular expertise in, uh, let's say, clinical study design, regulatory support, um, other types of funding opportunities that uh, we can help them with. So we would like the investigators to be supported and we would like them to know that uh, 50k of funding is just a small piece of support that they will receive from the CTSC program. I think the term smart funding is my favorite new phrase. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Thank you for sharing your experiences and your insights. Mm -hmm. uh, we are so glad that you took this time with us. This is the best way to ensure 
that you're kept up to date um, with CTSC funding and opportunities is to visit our website. Mm -hmm. And of, as always, please become a member. And uh, with membership comes perks, like great discussions like this. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me here today. From Research to Real Life is brought to you by the Clinical and Translational Science Collaborative of Northern Ohio. The views, recommendations, and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the presenters and not necessarily those of the CTSC or its partners.